In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to analyze a drive image using Kali Linux. So to begin, I'm going to start Kali Linux, which I have set up here in VirtualBox, just by clicking Start. And it's going to ask me at the boot menu uh, what I would like to boot. And I'm going to boot this into live forensic mode. And I'm using forensic mode because I don't want Kali Linux making any changes whatsoever to the host computer that it's running on. If I were using Kali to collect evidence, for example, off an actual machine, I would not want it potentially changing that evidence. That would be called spoliation, and that would be bad. So let's boot to forensic mode. And we can see the Kali Linux desktop is coming up now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and obtain the drive image that I'm going to be working with. Since this is a live CD environment, I am inside a basically a virtual computer here, and I don't have an easy way to get the image other than to download it. So to do that, I'm going to use the Ice Weasel web browser, which is simply a uh, version of Firefox with the branding and trademarks removed in order to obtain the evidence image that I want to work on. <coughs> and so now Ice Weasel has started. So I'm going to download the image from www.mikemurphycs.com slash teaching slash CSCI 434 slash flash underscore drive dot img. And it's going to ask what I want to do with the file. I'm going to save it. And I'm just going to save it in the root uh, home directory for the root user here. Let's accept the defaults and click save. Okay, now the file is saved. So I can go ahead and close out of Ice Weasel. And I'm going to go ahead and start up the forensic tool that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to go to Applications, Kali Linux, Forensics, Forensic Suites, and pick Autopsy. Autopsy is a forensic browser that will enable us to look at the contents of this drive image. So as we can see, Autopsy starts up in a terminal window and it says open an HTML browser on the remote host and paste this URL in it. Really, all we have to do is hover the mouse over the URL, right-click, and pick Open Link. And you can see that Autopsy has opened now inside the Ice Weasel web browser. So what we're going to do in order to analyze this image that we've downloaded is create a new case. For the case name, I'm just going to put E3 as an abbreviation for Exercise 3. I can leave out the description and the investigator names. Uh, if we were doing a more formal analysis, we were doing a case that was going to be shared by multiple investigators, we would put this information in here. But uh, for our purposes, all we need is the case name. And then we'll click the New Case button. Now it's going to ask us or prompt us to add a host for this case. So we'll click the Add Host button. I'm just going to leave this set to the default, host1, and I'm not going to do a time skew adjustment. And my scroll wheel actually doesn't want to work in here. And so I'm just going to click Add Host. Okay. And so now we've added the host. It's going to prompt us to add an image to the host. So I'll click Add Image. And I'm going to click Add Image File. Now it's going to ask me for the full path starting with slash of the image file. We downloaded that to slash root slash flash underscore drive dot img. This is a partition image and we're going to copy it into our evidence locker. So we'll click next. 
It's then going to prompt us whether we would like to check the hash value of the image or whether we'd like to calculate it. We're going to go ahead and calculate the hash value of the image and we'll click add. So now we have the hash value of the image. This is the MD5 sum of the image and what this is is a fingerprint of the image file that we can use to compare against a known good fingerprint to make sure that the image downloaded correctly. <coughs> and so this begins with BC1230A and ends with F48C. That's the MD5 sum for the whole image. That's not a single file in the image, but that is the MD5 for the entire image itself. All right, so I'll click OK. And now I'm at my main case management screen, my E3 case, host one host. So I have the C drive, which is the flash drive.img file selected. I'm going to click Analyze. It's going to ask me what kind of analysis that I'd like to do. So I'm going to do a file analysis. When I do a file analysis, it gives me a list of the files that are inside this image. I can see this image also contains some directories. So here I'm going to click on the download directory that's inside this image. And I can see that there are some additional files inside the download directory. If I would like to find out what the MD5 hash values are for each of these files, I can click the Generate MD5 List of Files button. This will pop up a new browser tab, which will have the calculated MD5 sum values for each file in the current directory. So this is inside the download directory of that flash drive image we downloaded, and here are the MD5 sums for each file in that directory. Now every file that's in the directory has a timestamp. The timestamp can actually be broken into three parts. A written or a modified time, this is sometimes called the M time, an access time, which is sometimes called the A time, and a creation time, which is sometimes called the C time. I can see for each of these files that I have the modification time and the creation time, and in fact these timestamps are the same for each of the files, indicating that none of the files in this directory have been modified since they were created. The access time is set to 0 UTC on the same date as the creation time. This indicates that this particular file system does not support access times and therefore does not record the times at which files in the file system were accessed. Not all, not all file systems do, and in fact even for file systems that do, with modern SSD type hardware, uh, solid state drives, will typically turn access times off uh, in order to reduce the number of writes back to the device. Uh, that's simply to prolong the lifetime of solid state media. So uh, access times are probably the least important because they're not always going to be present or reliable. But we can see the modification time, we can see the creation time. We can also preview the contents. So if I click on this a.png file, I can see a preview of what this contains. And what this contains is actually a diamond uh, a blue diamond shaped uh, outline. And that's just because if I view the full size image, that's really all this file is, is simply a diamond. <coughs> okay, so that's how I viewed some contents of a drive image using Autopsy. I've been able to preview the contents of the file. I've been able to obtain an MD5 listing of the file with the create MD5 list of sums and I'm able to navigate around the contents of the image file that I've downloaded. When I want to go to exit autopsy I can close out of the analysis section by clicking the close button here 
And I can close all autopsy altogether uh, by closing the host that I'm working on, closing the case, and then simply closing the browser window. The last thing I need to do is actually to exit autopsy. And to do that, I need to press Control C. Now it's important that I use the left control key when I'm running inside VirtualBox because the right control key is actually bound to VirtualBox itself for sending special signals to VirtualBox. So I'm going to hit the left control key and hit C and I can see that the window goes away. And now I can simply close the Kali Linux environment by clicking on root, clicking on shutdown, and clicking shutdown. And then when it prompts me to close the tray, can simply hit enter and the virtual machine is now shut down. So that is the simple way to analyze a disk image using autopsy inside Kali Linux.